Hey everyone, uh, Jeremy here. It's Tuesday night and we're going to create some art. It's going to be awesome. Um, I don't really have any announcements to make, so I think I'm just going to jump right in. If you guys are in the chat room, feel free to chat with me um, and we're just going to have a good time. Uh, if you're wondering what we're working on tonight, uh, I've been working on a series of uh, coffee paintings, uh, mostly wildlife. Well, almost all wildlife. I do want to kind of vary it up and try some other things in uh, coffee painting, but for now it's just been wildlife. I'm trying to create a series that I can hang up on the wall inside of a coffee shop if you guys have been following along. Um, so one of the, uh, the pictures that I did um, was of a horse, but it was a gift for somebody. So now I have to kind of like uh, replace it with another horse. Uh, so that's what I'm working on tonight. So again, if you guys are in the chat room, feel free to chime in. Otherwise, I'm just going to jump in and get started. Um, so here I already have the horse kind of uh, sketched out. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm just going to uh, jump right in. Uh, if you guys have been following for a while, you kind of know the process. Uh, basically, I just, I, um, I use uh, instant coffee uh, and I apply water to it and then I apply it to the page. Hey, because I can. Cool. All right. I was hoping I, I wasn't the only person in here. I mean, if, it, if, it, if I'm the only one in here, I can chat with my little uh, wooden figure. We gave him a name last week, uh, Geppetto. Um, so I could just chat with him. But it's nice to, to see that you're in here. Hey, a kid's in here. Cool. All right. Um, so basically, the process at the beginning is just to kind of uh, um, make a big mess. And I want to really, really like lay it on thick because I'm going to use gravity to kind of create some streams here. I'm going to go ahead and get some of these streams uh, a little bit directed. Now, this part is kind of like, hopefully it goes well because, uh, I mean, it is a big mess. So, like, no idea how it's going to turn out, but it's a good start. Hey, we got uh, Larry in here. We got a uh, kid in here. We've got Because It Can. That's a party. Yeah. So... Usually I try to get a couple of little streaks going. Um, I've got a paper towel here somewhere. I had some paper towels. Well, let me grab another one. Sorry. I've got a bunch of uh, like supplies underneath my art desk here in case I need. So there's a bit of a mess here at the bottom of this. So I'm just going to clean that up real quick. So I do like how these two streams kind of came down. That's, that's kind of cool. Oh, you're calling him Geppetto already. That's cool. Yeah, I like that name. I'm, I'm glad you guys picked that name. And like, I left it up to you guys, and I was going to stick with whatever you guys came up with, but I was secretly pulling for uh, Geppetto, just because it's a cool name. Um, I had a, f well, no, I got a story for you guys, actually, about Geppetto. Um, not Geppetto, the stick figure, but just a, a story from my life in general. So, as some of you guys know, I, I am a software developer, and I've I kind of got my start. I don't exclusively do websites, but I kind of got my start in doing websites. And um, uh, I was I was uh, perusing a website. Uh, I want to say it was like 2005, something like that. And, and I wasn't very happy with the website. I thought it kind of sucked. Um, so I reached out to the owner of the website and I'm like, look, I, I, I don't think your website's all that great. I, I kind of want to rebuild it. And um, where did I put my paper towel this time? All right, I've got disappearing paper towels. That's weird. All right, I'm going to put this paper towel in my lap just so I can get to it. All right, paper towel in my lap. Not going to loop it. All right, so anyway, so um, back in like 2005, something like that, I reached out to this guy, and I'm like, your website sucks. Uh, I want to rebuild it. And... Um, the guy's like, uh, yeah, sure, cool. Uh, rebuild it. Just tell me what it costs. Um, sometimes that's the way it goes. And uh, and I did. So I, I rebuilt his website, and he uh, he was pretty happy with it. So he reached out to me, and he says, hey, I got another website for you, right? So as it turns out, and this is no lie, this is a true story, the guy who I built the website for was the son of Patrick Denver. Uh, out in LA, right? Uh, his name is, um, oh, I'm sorry, the, the son of Bob, uh, Bob Denver. Uh, his name was Patrick Denver. Sorry, I got that mixed up. Uh, it, hey, if you're watching after all these years, I'm sorry, Patrick. Um, so he's the son of Bob Den Denver. And if you guys don't know who uh, Bob Denver is, he's the guy who played Gilligan. So I had built a website for the son of Gilligan. And um, 
it's pretty cool. Like, uh, we, we got to be, uh, kind of friends. Um, I never met him in person. This was all done uh, online, but the website, the second website he wanted me to build was for a pilot TV show about washed up actor puppets. And the name of the show was Geppetto's place. That's my story. That's the whole story behind, uh, Geppetto. Uh, so I thought that would be a cool name for my puppet. If you guys, uh, ended up choosing that, I didn't want to give the story because I didn't want to bias it. But now that you guys have already picked, I don't mind telling you guys that story. So long story short, kind of sum it up. I built a website for the son of Gilligan and he wanted a second website built. And this one was for a pilot TV show about washed up puppet actors at a bar named Geppetto's place. So I always thought that was a kind of cool story. It's a true story too. It's, um, you know, I <laughs> like, it's so weird to, uh, to know the guy who is uh, the son of uh, Gilligan. Because I, I like that show. Like, I mean, it was before my time. I'm not that old, but um, I used to watch it growing up. Uh, Gilligan's Island. Jeez, I, I just realized some of you guys might be young enough where you don't even know anything what I'm talking about. But anyway, there was that show, Gilligan Island, and Gilligan was the main star. Like, there was a bunch of people on it, but in, in my mind, Gilligan was the main star. So anyway, um, so we got this mess. Um, it's kind of warped the paper. So I have to keep track of these like little pools and kind of redirect those if I feel like they're going to dry kind of funky, but otherwise just let them sit, let them dry. Um, yeah, it does kind of look like a broken maple leaf. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to, um, start filling in some of these areas so that we can get a basic course going. So. I like to fill in all the areas that I think are going to be a little bit darker, even though they're going to be light to begin with. Uh, and that's just so that I know that um, these are areas that I need to come back and kind of um, fill in. But anyway, enough about my story. So how's your guys' week going? Oh, I see uh, haters showed up. That's cool. Um, hopefully you guys are having a good week so far. I don't know what's like uh, where you guys are, but it's crazy weather here last week it was negative nine this week is supposed to get up to 60. <laughs> it's just weird so 60 is a little uh a little cool for shorts weather but i guarantee you i'm gonna see people wearing shorts out there which you know i mean that's their thing but yeah um the, uh, the trade-off, though, is that we've got the warmer weather, but it's all rainy. So, like, it's not like you can go outside and really enjoy yourself. It's uh, it's still nasty weather. But, you know, I think I'll... And so, I like to go for walks and stuff, and I haven't been because it's been so cold. I think I'll put on a raincoat and go walking in the rain. That'll be kind of cool. I've never been shy about walking in the rain. Because, like, I don't know. It's just nice. I don't consider rain bad weather. I consider it like, well, I can't have a picnic, but that's still not bad weather. As long as it's warm. It is Tuesday. I forgot. Yeah. Well, I, I, I said that at the beginning of the show, but I completely forgot that it was Tuesday um, in my in my thinking. I knew I had a live stream I had to do tonight, but it could have been Friday for all I know. I don't know. That's what kind of, uh, that's where I'm at these days. I don't, I don't know what day it is. I don't like, you would think that you have um, some concept of what day it is because of, like, meetings and stuff like that. Uh, it, it's not that way for me. People people ask me for meetings out of the blue. They don't schedule them in advance. So it, it, could, be, it could be Saturday for all I know. I, plus, uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I've been trying to, I've been trying to, even though, like, last year I didn't do the art every single day type thing. Um, I tried to stick with it as close as I could, and I'm trying it again this year where maybe I'm not doing art every single day, but I am trying to uh, just do little drawings where I can, um, even if they're not big pieces like this. Like, th this paper is uh, that 12 by 18, so this is probably, like, on the larger side, but I still want to I still want to practice art every single day. So I might do it like a little doodle. Uh, you guys might have seen my little um, scribble art that I've been doing. Um, those are those are what I consider like little doodles. 
even though they're not really doodles. I mean, I, I actually like how they're turning out. I think those are cool. Uh, I'm definitely going to do more of those, but... Taco soup. Oh, there's an idea. I've never had taco soup. Um, I've had stuff that's close, but I don't think I've ever had actual taco soup. I had a taco pizza, like, last month. That was good. I like taco pizza. Uh, especially when they they uh, make it where you have the cool toppings on top, even even to the point of like sour cream and stuff like that. Uh, just that flavor combination. It like you can't really go wrong with a pizza. Basically, anything goes on a pizza, even pineapple. <laughs> even pineapple goes on a pizza. You can't go any uh, can't go wrong. But I like it when they make it really fit the. Uh, the taco metaphor, I guess. Because, yeah, it, it'd be a metaphor. Because it's a pizza, but trying to be a taco. That, that's a metaphor. I think I'm using the term right. Soup weather. Yeah. I love a good soup. I love a good soup. I'm glad that you guys like soup as well. Um, I like salads during the summer, just on the cool side, and soup during the winter. I look forward to fall because then it becomes like soup weather. And um, I get, I've gotten kind of particular in my soup. I never thought I would. Like, uh, I'm, I'm still a, I, I still enjoy a good tomato soup. Um, but I, I start started to like want different things. Like, I love a good curry soup. Like, um, like a Thai soup with like, uh, the thing that comes to my mind is like a coconut curry uh, soup. So good. And I, I don't know where that comes from because I, I don't live anywhere where like I would have, you know, like a like a cultural bias to curry or anything like that. But yeah, I've just I've just taken it up where I just love the taste of curry. Anything spicy. I'm just into spicy stuff. <laughs> don't hate on my tank. <laughs> I'm hoping your guys' week is going as, as well as mine, <laughs> which means I've been super busy. Because that's what you want during the winter time, right? You want to be busy during the winter winter time and then freed up during the summer to relax. So I try to get in all my real work during the winter if I can. It doesn't always go that way, but I'm not at the point where I'm master of my own destiny or anything like that. I'm, I'm definitely subservient to other people. But one day, one day, one day I will be in control of my own destiny and I will make my own schedule. But for now, I've got to put in the work. That's not really true. We're all masters of our own destiny. Make it happen, guys. Make it happen. And if you can't make it happen, find people who will aid you in making it happen because everybody does. So, like, I really, truly believe this, and it doesn't get discussed enough, but I think that if you've got something you're into and you're really super motivated and excited about it and positive about it, people will come into your life that share that vision and want to see you succeed. There's this, there's this story in the world that everybody is out for themselves and everybody, you know, wants theirs and, you know, screw the other guy and stuff like, I don't believe that's true. I really don't believe that's true. And, um, what I, what I have for like proof of that theory is that just, just try something, anything, be it art, be it writing, be it whatever, and just be really excited about it. And, and people will, people will support you. People will show up and people will like, be like, that's cool. I like what that guy's doing, and maybe that inspires you to do something of your own. That's the way I look at it. I, I really do believe that, like, as a core principle in life, that if you're passionate about something, you will find others who support your passion. Um, and it's proof. You guys show up and watch me paint horses every week. I mean, I know part of it is just to hang out with each other. Uh, part of it has nothing to do with me. You guys just like talking to each other and stuff. And that's cool. Um, but part of it is, uh, yeah, you know, you guys like talking to me too. And I, I, I appreciate that. I think that more people should have that frame of mind. 
I, I think it'd be a better world. And, um, you know, the, the thing about it is I, I actually do believe it. I think it's true. I, I would argue that point with anybody. Um, it is not the narrative that people have where everybody's out to get uh, out for themselves. Um, you know, maybe to a degree, maybe those assholes who run corporations, they're out for themselves, but not, uh, not in general. In general, you know, we're still, we're still a race of people who like to help each other and support each other and stand by each other. Uh, that's why, you know, people form families and stuff like that. Little, little tiny groups of people, little tiny people in them, big old support system. Not everybody has it. I realize that. Like some people, um, you know, struggle, but you know, you don't have to go far to look for one. Yeah, no, there is no. Yeah, thanks uh, because I can. No, there is no drama here. I have no drama to give. Like, um, I get upset about things, same as anybody else. But man, it's short lived. Uh, it, it might be because I drink a lot. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't really drink a lot, um, but. He says that he picks this up. Um, no, like any drama I've got, like anytime I get upset and stuff, I'll, I'll sleep on it and the next day I'll feel totally different. I, you know, that's probably one of my biggest faults is that I, I do change my mind. I do go back and forth on things a lot and usually for the better. Um, I am, I am the type of person who like dwells on things and thinks them through to the point to where it's just absurd. And, uh, you know, ultimately I just end up going, well, there is no answer. I just give up and stuff. That's how I feel about like things I'm upset about. Like I think about them too much and then I just let them go. And I, and I, I, I do recommend that. Like, uh, uh, a lot of people do that to different degrees, but, um, for me, it's, uh, it's kind of my default mode. I'll get pissed, but I'll get over it pretty quick. I don't hold grudges or anything like that. And I guess, I guess I couldn't even say, well, all right, it is, I get pissed because it is a, you know, an emotion of anger or something like that, but I would call it more like, um, frustration and frustration always passes. Like you're only frustrated for a short period of time. Hey, total, welcome back. You asked for the wrench. I gave you the wrench and then you just dipped on me. Like, <laughs> peace out, Jeremy. I got my wrench. I'm out. Welcome back, total. That's funny. I haven't seen you in like forever. You'd come in. Um, uh, so for those who don't know, Total's been in here for a while, but um, he would come in every single day. Like, uh, can you make me a, a moderator? Uh, and I'm like, yeah, sure. I love just let me remember because I, I would always forget. And um, I, I'd forget. So he'd come back the next week and be like, can you make me a moderator? I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll get around to it. Finally, I remember to. And then he stopped showing up or she, I don't know. I don't know. It could be a she. That's kind of funny. Hello, Total. Are you summing us up? Just kidding. Oh, I'm the opposite of that mentality. I'm out for everyone except me, but I'm working on that. Yeah. You know, I, I all I can say is like, well, all I can say is where I'd like to be. There's no judgments on anybody. Like we're all in different situations. I've been fortunate enough in my life to where I can, I can be the way that I am where I don't hold grudges, but I, I realize that other people have way worse lives than me. And, and, you know, I respect that. Like some people broke, I'm like, I didn't grow up in like a broken home or anything like that. I, I really had no reason to be upset as a kid. I know that other people have different experiences. So that that's another core principle of mine is even though I do judge, I, I judge people. Um, I try not to. And, and even when I judge people, I don't hold it against them. Like I might have, I might have a, um, a sour opinion of you or something like that. Like if you come off as like an asshole, I probably will have like a not so great opinion of you. But then, you know, the next moment when you're being nice or something, my opinion will change dramatically and, I will feel the entire opposite. Yeah, so it is kind of buckling here as it does when uh, this paper gets wet. 
which is fine. It dries a little bit flatter, but I have to be careful about that because if I put stuff on here, you know, gravity will pull it down to these little things, but I don't mind that. I think that actually looks cool. So I'm just going to leave that be instead of trying to mop it up. Uh, one of the cool things about these uh, copy art pictures is I kind of just let them do whatever they want to do. And um, sometimes that's uh, that works out really well. And then, I don't know, there, and then sometimes there's like mistakes that I have to fix. Uh, on that chipmunk picture, <laughs> like I, I had like thrown a swatch and I ended up with like this little island down here. It kind of looked like, I don't know, like Manhattan or something like that. And um, I'm like, oh, that's just no good. I've, I've got to fix that. So I ended up adding a uh, a lot of like coffee down there at the bottom where that island was just to kind of cover up that mistake. And sometimes that's how it goes, you know. So I don't consider any kind of splotches a mistake in these coffee pictures, but some of them have to be kind of like dressed up a little bit, you know. Hopefully the chat's working to where I can see everything you guys are saying because I am having problems with my OBS studio where the chat room's not showing up in it. I've got like a web page with the chat in it, but I think it works. So I'm not too worried about it. I want to kind of get darker on this outline just because right now it's kind of the same tone. And I kind of want to set these like little reminders for myself that this is supposed to be like a darker area. Same with down here. Of course, as I tinker with it more, it'll get much darker, but want to um, want to remind myself of that yeah so it's starting to kind of look like a horse but yeah I've been super busy here so busy that like I plan for um I don't know fun things to do and stuff especially on the weekends and stuff and then I end up abandoning them because I'm like just busy doing things um so I, I should say this isn't just like work related. I've got, I've got projects that I'm I've been working on for, I don't know, many months now. Uh, software related projects that I hope to launch sometime this year. I was hoping they'd launch last year, but I kind of fell behind. And um, you know, probably because it's January, I'm kind of like in that mode where it's just I just want to work. You know, it, the weather's crap outside. I don't. I don't have anywhere to go. I don't have anywhere to, uh, anything to do. I've never been a guy that goes out and parties all the time anyway. I, I, you know, I might go to the pub and, you know, to like some, some little thing that's going on, like art galleries, things like that. I do all that, but um, I'm not a person who goes out and just parties all weekend or anything like that. But certainly during the winter, I'm, I'm kind of like, well, I'll just stay home. <laughs> I think the last thing that I actually did is that I went to that gallery I was telling you guys about that had that show. Um, that was, man, That was, I feel like that was like two weeks ago, but maybe that was last, no, that wasn't last weekend. That was the weekend before that, so yeah, almost two weeks ago. No, I guess a week and a half or whatever. That's the last time I went out and just had fun. Went out last night to a horse farm to uh, meet with some clients. That was kind of cool, but it was dark. I didn't get to play with any horses. One of the great things about living around here. So like, I guess it's probably different wherever anybody lives and stuff. Like I can imagine if you lived near the beach, people would probably invite you to the beach a lot, right? If you lived, um, if you lived on a lake, maybe all your friends have boats or something and you go out boating uh, around here, it's horses. So, um, I'm going to move this down just a little bit so you can kind of see these ears. Um, around here, it's horses. So uh, whenever I get invited out, it's either to horse racing or come out to the farm, play with my horses, ride my horses, although I haven't been riding in a while. Um, it's things of that nature. Uh, well, not just that. Like around here, there's like, I don't know, woods and... and um, uh, waterways, things like that. I do kayaking a lot. That's kind of my go-to fun during the uh, warmer days as I go kayaking. 
there's a lot of um litter litter little inner waterways around here like creeks and stuff and it's just so cool like it's almost like you're traveling like a canal in the middle of the city and you see like turtles and and birds and, and things i love that kind of stuff uh, i like to go walking too and you see different animals but i i like i mean it's kind of like walking but just like just gliding around in, in a kayak That's my thing. So don't let me forget. I don't want to color in this part because he's got a uh, a nice star blaze up here. I I, I think that's what it's called. Um, I think it's big enough to be a star blaze, but it's um this whole patch here is a bit of a blaze. Hey, creative boredom, how's it going? That guy is the nut. Creative boredom. If you ever go to his channel, he he's so funny. Creative board. I had a good time uh, hanging out in your chat channel the other day. He's just, I don't know, it's just so random, like just crazy uh, craziness. And I, uh, oh, and he also draws. Yeah. So, um, uh, creative boredom is, is a comedian first, I think, and then also a draw, you know, like a guy who draws. I had a lot of fun last night. Hey, thanks, Mama Q. I appreciate that. Oh, what are you guys talking about? You guys, I, I'm looking for a good movie. You, you, because I can, you said it was a good movie. I have to look up now. Um, have you, oh, A River Runs Through It. I have not ever seen that. That's all you guys ever talked about, too. I, I, I feel like I have to see it. Uh, I don't know how I missed that. Like, I, I guess I, when it came out or something, it, it just wasn't on my radar back in the day. Um, I do want to see that. Yeah, creative boredom. I had a good time. Um, yeah, I'm looking for a. Uh, I'm actually looking for a a good movie to watch, but I I think I have this kind of show hole where uh, I really need a good series to watch. My problem is that I've been doing these watch parties like you guys you guys some of you guys participate in those watch parties but um i've been doing these watch parties with people on discord and and it because it's a group um because it's a group it's so tough to get everybody's schedules together so you end up watching them in bits and pieces and stuff and i just want to like marathon them and just watch all of them but you have to kind of wait for everybody to catch up so it's tough i need a uh i need a good series it has like, I don't know, four to five seasons, maybe 20 episodes each. That's like the kind of stuff that you need during this weather. A good, a good show to marathon when it's like nasty out. Just curl up in front of the TV, maybe draw some pictures while you're watching movies. But um, yeah, I always end up going back to the same shows. Oh, thanks. Thanks, CB. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's okay, Mommy Q. Yeah, I just haven't gotten around to it. Uh, is there a place I can stream that? Do you guys know? Oh, Blacklist. Yeah, I've seen one or two episodes of that, and I really like, ah, um, oh, crap, what's his name? Uh, James Spader, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, Blacklist is a great suggestion, I think. I, I've only seen one or two episodes, but I, I think that might be good. Um do you guys know where I can stream A River Runs Through It? Because I would like to actually watch that maybe this weekend or something. Just so I can catch up with everybody else who just says it's the greatest show, <laughs> greatest movie ever. Um, the last movie I actually watched that I can recall, I probably watched a few little ones here and there. Um, I finally got around to watching uh, Everything, uh, Everywhere, All at Once. That's a great movie. As a great movie. Uh, I think it won Oscars and awards and stuff like that. And uh, I see why. And the guy who plays in it, I forget his name. Uh, I always call him Short Round because he was in uh, the Indiana Jones movie back in the day. And he also was in Goonies. Um, that guy, he's just he's just the greatest guy. Um, I ran into him once at a Comic-Con. I didn't get to actually meet him. But... Um, you know, I kind of saw him from a distance and he's just the nicest guy. Like I overheard him talking to people. Um, basically I was too cheap to go up and get an autograph. Uh, but I kind of wish I had, I've got his autograph now, but, um, at the time I was like, yeah, I don't, I can't afford to go up there and meet these people. 
so I would just kind of like stalk him from a distance. Uh, he was there. Um, the guy who played the Emperor in Star Wars, he was there. I'm trying to think of some of the others. Um, Captain Riker from like Star Trek was there. I don't know if you get that's like next generation. That's been out too long. That's from way back in the day. But yeah, that was a good Comic Con. They had a good, good group of people there. But yeah, so the guy who played Short Round was in that movie. It was just a good movie if you guys haven't seen it yet. A River Runs Through is on Amazon Prime. Is it? Oh, is it like the free or do you rent it on Amazon Prime? Because I'm a cheap bastard. <laughs> hmm. So I don't know if you're asking a hater how his day is going, but um, I'm going to chime in anyway. My day is going great. My day is going great. My day is going better because you guys are here. How's that for you guys? You guys make my day best. Honestly, most of the stuff I do, I'd rather be draw. Uh, I, I'd rather be painting, drawing, doing art and stuff, and hanging out with you guys. This is really like I am not lying. I am not like overstating it. This is the god honest truth. This is the highlight of my week: hanging out with you guys, doing art. Um, I would probably do art even if you guys weren't here. Uh, sometimes I do, but I always enjoy it more when when you you guys are on. Even those days when I'm tired, like I'm I'm really tired right now. I, I might actually go to sleep after this. Um, but even the days when I'm tired, I feel more energetic uh, hanging out with you guys in these chats. So, but you guys should feel good about that. You know, you guys make my day better. Appreciate it. Well, hopefully everybody's day is going great. One of the stories was called U.S. Forest 1990. Ranger and Cook. Huh. Yeah, I might get into that blacklist. That, that actually sounds pretty cool. Because I, I feel like that's been around a while where there's a bunch of episodes popped up. My go-to is like whenever I run out of uh, things, I, I go back to the well. Um, so I just finished up watching Community, uh, like a rewatch of Community. That's such a good show. Such a funny show. Um, and then the other go-to that I always go back to is uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Because there's just so many episodes of that. They, like these shows have been around, not, not Community. Community only had a couple of seasons. But um, Always Sunny in Philadelphia, It's it's just been around forever. I think they've got like 15 seasons of that or something crazy. And... Um, yeah, I just, I never watch these things, like, completely focused on them. Um, I just have them kind of, like, on, on in the background while I'm doing other things. Like, I might I might be um, playing them while I'm, like, drawing something or, or writing code or something like that. So I'm not really focused, but, um, yeah, Always Sunny in Philadelphia is good for that. Oh right, yeah, you, um, yeah. So H Hater recently had a uh, like an accident of some sort, and um, yeah, I can imagine you're probably in a lot of pain there, sir. I do hope you feel better. So one of the things I've been trying to do with my brush strokes is just kind of like instead of like trying to be so precise with them, I just kind of swash, and I think that's a better look. So I don't know if you guys pay that close attention to the stuff I do, but um, I used to use smaller brushes and make it more look sketchy, sketch, sketch like, not sketchy as in like, <laughs> like, I don't know, like, that, what's the word, that, not sketchy as in uh, something that you should be wary of, uh, sketchy as in like, it looks like a sketch. I've been trying to be like more free with my brush strokes, I guess. Yeah, I think it looks cool. And I'm not that worried about making weirdness out of it. So I gotta, gotta kind of bring this coffee down, but I don't want to just try to do like that. And I kind of want to, yeah, I can build off of that. Yeah, I like, 
Oh, I like this bit. I was pointing at my computer screen. I'm like, I like that. <laughs> you guys can't see what I'm pointing at. Sketchify. There we go. All right. See, we're coining new terms here. Uh, not sketchy because sketchy means uh, like uh, suspect. Yeah, that, that's what I was looking for. Suspect. Um, it's not suspect. It's a. Uh, it's sketchy. It's sketchified. There we go. I like that. Sam Elliott is in one of my favorite movies. Um, what movie is that? I like Sam Elliott. Yeah, so let's bring the snap down. Got to be careful through here because I want some, uh, I want a lot of this to be highlighted. So um, it might take a couple of passes at this before I get it to where I want. But this is really where you kind of like build in the horsiness. <laughs> I'm just making up words, horsiness. The horsiness of the picture is built in this face. I want to say snout, but I, I don't think it's technically a snout. I don't know. I don't know what a snout is, but I don't think that's it. Um, the other thing I've been doing, I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but there's kind of like a splotch here. I've been trying to smooth some of these out so that I, I want to kind of give it that painterly look and less um, drawn, if that makes sense. So I don't want to turn this not white, but I do kind of want some tone in here. There you go. That's a good start for a face on a horse, I think. And then the rest of it's just kind of darkening it up. So I do kind of want all of this kind of colored in, so I'll just kind of rush through that. Um, a lot of this stuff moves over time, so again, it's really hard to make a mistake that you can't fix. There are mistakes you can make, certainly, but making mistakes that you can't fix is, um, yeah, I mean, you gotta be really, you gotta be really trying hard. Because you can always kind of erase some of this stuff as well. Like, you can use clear water and just kind of lift it up. Um, there are some mistakes that are harder to fix. and uh, But I haven't encountered anything that just makes me want to throw the picture away yet. Face Off. That's a good movie. Yeah. Basically anything, Nicolas Cage. So, Nicolas Cage is the most unpredictable actor out there, in my opinion. I, I don't think that's just my opinion. I think most people think that way. Um you can watch a Nicolas Cage movie and you really don't know until you're watching it, whether it's going to be good or not. Like most movies you can kind of predict in advance, like, well, I like this guy and he's, he's pretty good in most things and stuff. So I know what to expect. You have no idea what to expect with like a Nicolas Cage movie. Um, but, um, that was probably back during his more predictable days. But yeah, the truth of it is that when it comes to Nicolas Cage, it's either going to be really good or really bad. And I like both. I, I like Nicolas Cage's really bad movies, too. Um, let's see. All those movies came out at that same time. Uh, Face Off. Um, Con Air. Uh, the Rock, I think, came around then. Like, maybe a year or two before. He was just he was on a roll back then. I'm a huge fan of Nicolas Cage. You guys uh, probably saw my Kurt Russell um painting over the holidays uh that was because my buddy does a uh, podcast uh about kurt russell and i didn't know so like he he was a co-worker of mine can he quit tearing out the floor um so he was a co-worker of mine and i had no idea he was that into like kurt russell like him and his buddy are just like they know everything about kurt russell so lately I've been watching some Kurt Russell movies because they're mentioned on that podcast. Um, like, uh, well, I watched Miracle and I'm not a big sports guy. So like I would probably never have watched Miracle otherwise. Um, but that was a good movie. That was about the U.S. win against the Russians in hockey um, back in the 80s sometime. I want to say 84, something like that. But it was totally unexpected. Like, Russians had the best hockey team in the entire world. No one could compete with them. And then out of the blue, um, the U.S. not only competed with them, but won gold medal against them in the, uh, the Olympics. And uh, it's the story behind that, like how this guy 
uh, played by Kurt Russell, uh, pieced together the um, the team that uh, that played the Russians and it, his strategy for winning and how he took them to the gold medal. So I watched that, and then um, I also watched. Uh... Oh, sorry, you have to actually have questions in here. Sorry. Um, all the strokes make the design more interesting to look at uh, and to ex inspect. Uh, I think details like that, uh, the ones you're adding, uh, are rather important. I agree. Um, I, uh, to to go with that, uh, be, um, creative boredom. Uh, I sometimes go to like art museums, and I get I get stuck on looking at the brush strokes. Uh, it's a big thing for me. Uh, I tell, I've told the story before about how I went and saw like a Leonardo da Vinci in person and there's this like little area, not even the main, like it was a portrait. Um, it's at the National uh, Gallery of Arts, National, whatever the one is in Washington, D.C. Um, but anyway, it's on display there and it's a, uh, it's a portrait, but I was stuck <laughs> looking at the, um, the brush strokes and the trees in the background. So I know exactly what you're talking about, uh, CD. Sick and Nomad, are you talking about the movie with Nick Cage or the special effects competition? Oh, you could be talking about Face Off, the TV show, not the movie. Well, forget everything I said about Nicolas Cage then. That's a good point. I should really pay attention more. Got to see your skills at painting elephants, Bill Gorman says. Uh, that's a great, um, that's a great, uh, observation there uh bill because that is one of the ones that i plan on working on soon i just wanted to replace my horse one because i gave it away um i am going to do an elephant soon so uh, make sure you stay tuned for that i know that elephants are a big deal to you bill and i will be happy to paint one just because they look cool you know i i kind of want to get through all the different various wildlife so you know all the usuals uh elephant tiger bears all the stuff that people normally uh create because some of these i've never done you know i've never done a giraffe or an elephant or an alligator or anything like that so i just kind of want to give it a shot and see if uh, i like painting them i love painting horses but they can't all be horses so yeah stay tuned for elephants man just an update on my health i am improving my wounds have healed leaving only a few scars on my left cheek um, although my left, uh, I am not going to try to pronounce that sternocleidomastoid muscle is still stiff and my collarbone is sore. Great. I'm glad that you are, are doing better. And, um, I'm sorry that you're still in pain and I hope that clears up soon. I really do. Um, it sounds like it sucks. So we'll, uh, we'll send some healing and thoughts out your way. I don't, I don't know if that stuff works, but, uh, you know, my friend Olivia, she's doing a lot better and I have to think it's because, you know, so much support from people. Um, I need to check in with her because I haven't talked to her in the last couple of weeks. I don't know where she's at on her, uh, her radiation treatment. So I need to check in with her hopefully soon. And that's kind of like where. I hope we're leading to is uh, I don't have to wear this shirt anymore because she's got a clear bill, a bill of health. If you guys remember, um, I only started wearing this shirt because I, I figure I will wear this shirt until she's better. And it's been several months now and I'm happy to wear it. But my uh, my goal is that I never have to wear this shirt again. I'm sure that's her goal, too. But yeah, like um, when when she was diagnosed, she, uh, she invited some people over to her house and she had a, um, a kick cancer party, which I thought was cool. Like just, a, uh, this, it was like summertime. That's how far back it was. Um, but grilling out and things like that, basically everybody got together to show support where, you know, she's just going to kick it. And I don't know who bought the shirts, but they were, um, they were passing them out and I got one and I'm just like, I'm just going to wear this until she's better. Now, I don't wear this every day. I wear these for the stream. I, I don't wear this every day. I, I, I do sometimes bathe. Sometimes. You know, I clean myself up sometimes. I wear other clothes sometimes. Although, it is nice to have kind of a uniform, you know, like uh, I might, when, she, when she's all better, I might find some other 
thing to wear all the time because it, it does help you like well i don't know what i'm gonna wear during this stream you know i'll, I'll figure all that out later the, the important thing is uh to make sure that she gets better yeah he, uh, it does sound like he's making great recovery so that's cool baby elephants hmm let me try doing a normal elephant and then I'll get into baby elephants because they are different. Just like I want to do like a foal at some point for the horses, but they are slightly different. So I'm only doing a horse tonight because my my friend got my other horse and I'm like, ah, I need a horse in this uh, this collection. Otherwise, I would be doing probably something like an elephant or um, a tiger. Like, a lot of artists create tigers, and I've never created a tiger. I, I think I might have drawn a tiger at some point, um, you know, when I was a kid. But I, I am kind of curious about doing a tiger just because of all the details and features, like stripes and stuff. Like, tigers have stripes, right? Gotta make sure you get stripes in there. If I can. I think my release date will be around March 1st. Oh, you're going in for surgery too. I really need to pay attention to the chat. Yeah, so healing thoughts to because I can, healing thoughts to Hater, healing thoughts to Olivia, healing thoughts to everyone. Uh I I wish you all speedy recovery. And uh, I hope you can get out there and arm wrestle again. Baby steps. So, kid wants you to arm wrestle a baby. <laughs> I don't know. If I arm wrestled a baby, the baby would probably win. Babies got strong grips. Like, um, I don't know if you guys realize that. Though. I like... Um, well, you guys probably you guys have seen babies before you guys know that they have strong grips but they, they've got like that rock solid grip and stuff it kind of, i think it's from uh our evolution from like monkeys and how monkeys had to cling on to uh other mama monkeys so they don't fall out of the trees but they've got like vice grips yeah i wouldn't want to arm wrestle a baby that's a that's a losing proposition i'm gonna <laughs> Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, hater, like, honestly, just you having Olivia in your, your, uh, your YouTube name. I mean, that's awesome. Um, I will ask her if, um, it, it like, I don't know, like, I feel like she should be like, I, I'm pretty sure she's aware of all the people who were pulling for her, but if not, I'm definitely going to stress that to her. And, um, you know, if she's not aware of it, I'm, I'm going to let her know. But I am kind of curious, um, you know, what her awareness of, of it is. I mean, I don't really want it. Like, I haven't, I haven't like um, bothered her a lot because she she is going through these things, and you know, I can only imagine how it is. Um, the last time I saw her was right after her um, her chemo uh, treatments. Like, me and my friends, we all went out to lunch and stuff. Uh, I haven't seen her in person since then, so. I need to, I definitely need to touch base and see how she's doing. But her and her husband just like live close by. We're all friends. We've been friends forever. Or, I don't know, since like 2012. So like uh, about 10 years. Uh, she was a co-worker of mine. Um, and uh, like, I was, um, I was kind of like her, uh, her lead software developer where I kind of had to show her the ropes and things like that. And we've just been friends ever since. Most of my friends, we end up meeting like randomly and like, I don't know, they're all different and stuff. So it's kind of interesting. Like a lot of times you hear about people uh, making friends with, uh, you know, people who like have like interests and like minds and stuff like that. That's not the case in my, in my world. Like, 
we're all different people with totally different interests. Like we have some common interests in, in general, but like when you get down into the nuts and bolts of it, we're all pretty different. And I like that. I like, I like hanging around people who are different from me because like it gives me a different perspective on things. Um, plus I'm weird. It's not like I can find somebody exactly like myself. Um, so I kind of, out of necessity, I have to hang out with people who are different than me. But in truth, I actually, I, I actually like that better. I, I'd rather hang out with people who are different than me than people who are like me. <laughs> I would probably get annoyed by them. <laughs> and they probably get, would easily get annoyed by me, so. Yeah, I, I, I like variety in, in people, um, you know, people who are the same. Um, you know, it's kind of boring. Uh, like especially in like corporate America, like in jobs and stuff like that. I mean, it's a pretty khaki world out there. I, I like people who are who um are you know more interesting than that. Did you get the pictures of Jack in the email? Yes. Um, as I mentioned before, I get all of your guys' emails. It's just I'm terrible at responding to them. Yes, Bill, I did get that. And at some point, I'm going to uh, I'm I'm either going to draw him or paint him. I haven't decided which. Um, I'm just trying to get through these coffee pictures just because like I did get somebody offering to uh, display them in his shop. Um, so I'm trying to create a collection of them. But uh, I also want to kind of. Uh, do a little bit of variety and stuff. So it's not going to be all coffee paintings. I'm just trying to knock it out a few. But yeah, um, yeah I'm totally going to draw you, uh, Jack. Jack the brown sniffing dog. So, all right. If you're serious that he sniffs bronze, like he can find bronze in the woods or something, explain that to me. How does that work? Like, do you show him pieces of bronze and like reward him if he finds bronze? Like, I was always, like, whenever people started talking about bronze sniffing dogs, I was curious how that works. Like, is it something in the metal that they smell? Like, how did that work? I'm a very curious person. I want to know how everything works. Because that sounds interesting. This cat over here is like, I'm a bronze sniffing cat. Oh, Rome's in the house. Cool. How you doing, Rome? Yeah, um, I recently did uh, Rome's uh, uh, portrait. Um, that's on the channel. I'll get back to doing uh, requests here pretty soon. Uh, maybe maybe Friday. I don't know. Like I I, I kind of want to vary it up. I don't want to just do uh, coffee pictures. Even though like you know they look cool, right? You guys like coffee pictures, right? Please tell me you like coffee pictures. <laughs> So you do kind of have to let these things dry a little bit before you go back over them layers. Um, same with watercolor or else they just kind of um, more blend together or you run the risk of like lifting up uh, stuff that's underneath. That's the only downside to this stuff is that you do have to, you do have to be patient. Kind of like work things as they dry, but that's okay. Um, as you guys have seen, most of the, most of the interesting um, features kind of come Towards the end, basically. That's where, like, I try to put in some cool details and stuff like that. Of course, some splotches just kind of naturally show up. I don't even know where those came from. But not mistakes, you know. Those are fine. Um, I'm thinking about doing... So, have you guys seen my scribble art pictures with the uh, pen? Um, where I try to do portraits? I don't know when I'm going to do it. I want to kind of practice with it a little bit. Oh, cool. Mama Q says we love copy picture pictures. We Senka, Senka very much. That has always been my joke. I, I've always been into like coffee. So like I've always been saying uh, Senka, Senka the very much. It's just, I don't know. I've just, I've been doing that since, uh, since I was a kid. I, I don't even know if they sell Senka anymore. I don't buy Senka. So like, I don't know. Is that still a brand that's still around? But it makes for a great joke at least. I love that joke. Um, yeah, so like uh, talking about my scribble art pictures, uh, I want to kind of practice with it a little bit more before I do this. 
but I was thinking, and I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to set this up, but I'm going to make a way where you guys can send me pictures and on, live during a live stream, I will open up the picture. And as long as it's tasteful, you know, I'm not, I'm not drawing your penis or whatever, but as long as it's tasteful, I will do live scribble art of by request of like i don't know if you send me like a uh, a picture of yourself or something like that um i will take requests and i will do them live and i will i will make a bit uh, like like an effort um I, i'll probably do this on like a saturday and just spend all day doing it because those scribble art pictures i'm trying to get them down to like where they're all 10 minutes uh the two i've done so far have been um the proportions are a little bit off like i know that I got likes and stuff like that, but to me, it's like, well, they 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 need some uh, they need some work. But as soon as I've got them to where I feel comfortable that they look, they don't have to be perfect, but if they look enough like the person I'm trying to draw, uh, I feel comfortable doing it live. You know, I I really stress um, that uh, there's a lot of benefit in in like putting yourself under pressure like that. Uh, where you know you have an audience and the audience holds you accountable. I'm I'm really big into that. And, um, yeah, so like, uh, I was thinking about doing a marathon on a Saturday where you guys send me pictures that you want drawn and it's all going to be scribble art because that's what I'm practicing. I'm trying to practice doing, um, scribble art and, um, yeah, whatever you guys send me, whatever tasteful things that you send me. <laughs> so scribble art, uh, that's a great question because it can, because like these have been short. So like, I, I realize not everybody's seen them, but I've done like two of them. So the, the rules are, um, oh, rum dog, you're doing a coffee painting. Oh, cool. Like if you are doing a coffee painting, send that to me by email. I'm kind of curious, uh, how it turns out. So like when you get that finished up, send it to me. Um, cause I want to see what you guys do as well. So, um, scribble art is where I set a rule to myself where I have to make this look as good as I can within 10 minutes. So I only have 10 minutes per picture. And um, this is why I think it would work well with like a marathon because like, you know, if they were all 10 minutes and you know, like I can get six done in an hour. So we can just sit here and you guys send me pictures and uh, I can get quite a few of them done. So I can, you know, take requests basically. And um, so 10 minutes each. And then the other rule is it's all done in ink where I hold the pen and I hold it to the paper and I scribble and I draw something in it and, and I make it look like something but the pen never leaves the paper. So that, that's the rule I set for myself is like, it's all one big line, one big line that ends up looking like a person or, you know, I'm going to try some dogs, things like that. See how it goes. But yeah, that's, that's all it is. It's just basically a scribble. I'm over explaining it. Um, yeah. And, um, uh, they're fun, you know, and what I like about them is that they don't take very long. And, you know, those of you who have been around, uh, you guys know that one of my, ambitious dreams i don't know if i'll ever get to it is where you know i'm the street artist I'm, I'm the guy in the pub or something like that who draws pictures of people on demand um where i don't spend any time prepping or anything like that i just basically draw them while they're waiting so if you're doing that which is great i, I would love to be able to do that um if i'm doing that then i can't be taking two hours to do it you know like i have to have some form of art that goes pretty quickly and um so that's why i'm trying I'm, I'm trying to give it a shot maybe i'll get get bored of it and give up on it or something like that but uh for now i'm, I'm actually enjoying it and um you know it, it's fun and it looks really cool with like shorts and stuff like whenever i do my like little 15 second shorts uh people seem to like it so I, i'm definitely going to do more of them practice and then eventually kind of um yeah just take requests and do them live uh because i, I think that's important as well anyway <laughs> over explaining it but let's see thank you thank you for your videos jeremy hey i appreciate that hater i appreciate it. um because the can says, uh, okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, it, it, it's like, it's it's basically in, in the title, Scribble Art is art made of scribbles. Um, Bill Gorman says, I got a picture of a wooden lumberjack with the axe like uh, Finn's book, a uh, double-bladed axe in a restaurant. That's cool. That is cool. Uh, speaking of Finn's book, um, you know, Scribble Art is kind of uh, similar in the style to Alan Polt's uh, Buffalo that he did in that. that that's really what I want to do. I want to do Al what Alan Polt does because uh, I admire the guy. 
I don't know if any of you guys have been to his website, but he does these amazing paintings as well. Um, I think it's alanpolt.net. Um, I think he's still in Taos. I don't know. But um, he, he was a... I don't want to say he was, because he, as far as I know, he's still alive. But um, he's a uh, Taos, 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 however you pronounce that, uh, New Mexico artist um, who does paintings mostly. But uh, they're really good. I like his style. I would love to live in Taos. Uh, I visited there once. I told you guys about that. and It's just beautiful there. A really strong art community. Basically, everybody on the street paints. Like, you're walking down the street, you see this grandma walking down the street on a stroller or something. She's a painter, I'm sure. It just, you know, you go to the gas station, pump your gas, you go and pay for it. The clerk behind the uh, counter, he's a painter. I'm, I'm exaggerating, but that's how it feels. Like, basically, it's like an entire city of artists. Well, town. It's not a very big place, but got a lot of history and stuff. So, yeah, maybe one day. I'd like to go back and visit, at least. Um, I'd like to go back and visit there, and I would love to go to... I never got a chance to go to Santa Fe, or that, um, that cool little place I got out there. I think it's called Meow something other, Meow... I don't know, one of you guys probably know, but I want to visit there. That looks cool. Got a lot of things on my wish list. Need to get to them all. Because you never know how long you've got around, you know? Gotta forget that bucket list. You gotta take, knock them all out now. Uh, stories were on the canyon walls been there too because I can't oh you've been to Taos yeah it's it's an awesome place um meow wolf thank you meow wolf yeah nah that place looks awesome um I was busy when I went out to New Mexico you know treasure hunting and stuff so I didn't really get a chance to go to all those cool places um but yeah now now that you know treasure hunts over there's nothing to find or whatever I, I want to go back and kind of knock out some of these touristy things that I really wanted to do and Meow Wolf just looks so interesting. That's the kind of crazy place I would build if I had like billions of dollars or something like that. Oh, they have a Meow Wolf in uh, Denver? That's cool. Well, Denver sounds like fun. I'd like to go skiing in Denver. That would be cool. I haven't been skiing in years. I would love to go skiing. Um, that's one of the few things that I enjoy doing in the cold. I'm not very, I don't like the cold. The cold sucks. Uh, I think I've told the joke here before, but, um, one of my jokes is that January and February are the, uh, flyover months. So, you know how, like, I don't know, the middle America is considered the flyover, uh, states, you know, you, Basically, the only thing that matters in the United States is New York and California or something, and everything else is a flyover state. I, I make the joke that um, January and February are the flyover months. They're just the months you want to get past. You don't look forward to them. You, like, winter is fine, but winter is basically Christmas, right? So, like, Christmas is great, but as soon as Christmas is over, you just want to skip ahead to spring. Like... There are some things in January, February that I look forward to, mostly February. I can't think of anything I look forward to in January. Um, February, I kind of said, the only thing I look forward to in February is that there's this church nearby, and I think I've told this story before. Um, there's this church that nearby is a Catholic church. I'm not Catholic. I don't go to church. I don't do any of this stuff, but they have the best fish fry during Lent. And the only reason I know what Lent is, is because they have a fish fry. And that's what I look forward to in February. I like to go over to that, that church, get, me so, uh, get myself some fish and some fries, and then go to the pub and eat my uh, fish and fries while drinking a pint of Guinness. <laughs> With brand new coffee. So this is like, so there's a dollar store uh, here, and this is just generic coffee. Like it just literally, here, I'll show you. It literally says coffee on it, right? 
So that's as much thought as I put into it. It literally says medium roast coffee, instant coffee. So there's no real brand to it. Um, I guess if I'm going to be doing this more often, I should probably pick a brand and see if there is a difference, like actually do a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, I pick up that just because it's like it's super cheap. Um, but I'm not sure if the quality of the coffee makes a difference. It doesn't seem like it would. Uh, I have in the past used um, um, Great Value brand, which is like, I, I don't know if they have Walmarts over there in, in London, but um, uh, that's like the Walmart brand. And it seems like it's the same as this. So I don't really know. I, I'm not one who spends a lot of money on art supplies. I mean, I'm painting with coffee here. Uh, so I would be kind of curious if there is a difference. But yeah, no, no fuss, nothing but it's just coffee. Yeah, there's literally, I like, there's not even a logo on there. It just literally says coffee. It's amazing. And uh, I only use that because I had it like laying around the house. Um, I, I think I bought it the last time I did a coffee painting, which was like a couple of years back or something. So yeah, I, I don't have a preference yet. It would be fun, kind of fun. Because you see these videos people do on YouTube all the time where they compare different paints, like different brands of watercolor or different brands of acrylics or uh, oil. It would be fun for me to do. It, it'd almost be like a parody of those videos to for me to get different sets of coffee and compare coffees. That would be amazing. I'm going to do that at some point. Yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't imagine you had a Walmart in London. There's basically one on every street corner over here in the American. Plus, I live in Kentucky, so we're kind of like a rural state. Like our our biggest population is um, probably in Louisville. You know, that's where they have the Derby, and then um, Northern Kentucky is basically a suburb of uh, Cincinnati. So that that's our biggest population. Where I live in Central Kentucky, uh, if we didn't have a university here, um, there it'd probably be all farms. So it's a uh, it's rural America where I'm at. So you've got other places you can go, um, but yeah, Walmart basically where you go for just general junk. Basically, every stereotype you hear about for those who don't live in the United States, uh, for those who do live in the United States, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But for those who don't live in the United States, basically every stereotype you hear about the United States probably originated in Kentucky. To be honest. <laughs> Maybe not all of them, but we, we definitely meet most of the stereotypes, you know, our population's overweight, um, you know, uh, especially when you get out to Eastern Kentucky, and I'm not making fun of them per se, but I kind of can make fun of them because I live here. Um, out in Eastern Kentucky, basically we have one set of teeth and everybody shares them, like everybody's got one tooth or something like that. I don't know. All those stereotypes and stuff, they're they're probably true in Kentucky. But we have a lot of horses, and that's why I live here. And it's beautiful. It, it, it is beautiful here. Um, you know, they call it the bluegrass region for a reason. It's it, it's not actually bluegrass. I mean, it's bluegrass. That's the name of the grass. Uh, it's not blue, but it is beautiful around here. It's just a bunch of rolling rolling fields of horses essentially here in central kentucky if you go outside of central kentucky uh you know maybe some uh cow fields cow farms and things like that i don't know what other industries we have out here maybe there's like i don't know there's some corn fields tobacco fields things like that but it's pretty it's pretty here and this is where the bourbon comes from so Worked at Folgers. I think I've tried Folgers coffee. Uh, you worked at Folgers in an as an electrician installing controls for freeze-dried coffee in 1979. Oh, cool. Um, it was a 7 to 12 hour days, 2500 a week in 1979. That is, that's real money there. That is amazing. I mean, even today, like 2500 that's a, that's nice. Yeah, I'm like, wait a minute, 2,500 so, uh, a week is, is serious money even today. Quick math here. That's like 10 grand a month. That's a lot. Man, that buys a lot of coffee. Yeah, I think I have used uh, Folgers uh, Instant Coffee for coffee painting in the past.
It's not what I'm using today, though. <laughs> but I, I really don't. So, like, sometimes people actually tune into this to, like, learn tips and tricks and stuff. Um, guys, if you're doing coffee painting, just grab whatever. Um, but don't buy decaf. There's no point in decaf. Jeremy rules out decaf. I don't know if it would work for coffee painting. Just as a general principle, never buy decaf. It's just terrible. Um, there's no point in it. It's like, I don't know. It's like um, non-alcoholic beer. It's like, why? That's how I feel about it. But otherwise, yeah, knock yourself out. Use whatever kind of um, instant coffee. And I have been practicing, and I think I can get to the point where it doesn't have to be instant coffee. I used instant coffee out of convenience. It's easier to control the amount of water that's in the um, in the uh, paint. Uh, paint. Um, but I don't think it has to be instant coffee. I think I can... So I have an espresso machine, so I can kind of control the amount of the coffee to water ratio. And I kind of tinkered with that the other day by just, you know, using a, a lot of coffee and a little bit of water. Um, you can probably use like a French press in the same way. It's, a, it's, it's all about getting the right, like if you just have a coffee pot, like a percolating coffee pot, that's not going to cut it. But if you can control the amount of um, coffee per water, then you probably don't have to use instant coffee. You can probably use regular coffee. And... You know, whenever you do something, you want to increase the quality of it. So in my mind, at some point, I want to get to the point where I'm using like pure coffee and being a snob about it. Like I'm using Italian roast, uh, Italian dark roast from wherever. Uh, I want to be snobby about the kind of coffee I've got, uh, I'm using. Right now I'm not, but I will definitely do that in the future as I actually try to... Um, get different kind of coffees going. Like, I, I don't want to just use a, a instant coffee. I want to I want to branch out and see what, see what different coffee does, you know, and see what espresso does versus, um, I don't know, like, a, I don't know, whatever other kind of coffees there are out there. I need to do some research on it so I can speak intelligently. So I think this is starting to look like a pretty good horse. There's some areas that need to be darkened up. Um, we're only like an hour and uh, 25 minutes into this, so I'm going to start working on like maybe some effects and uh, work on darkening up some areas as I go along. But I know like up here, I kind of want dark area. And, um, but I'm going to, I'm going to get some splatter areas going just so that I kind of have a good sense of what that looks like. Uh, so one tip I've got is, um, you do want to make sure, whatever kind of coffee you, you use, you do kind of want to make sure that it's really dissolved well. So, like, I can, let's see if I can show this. Um, I can come in here and I can just kind of grab it. And you can see that there's, like, coffee grounds in here and stuff. You don't want that. You want to kind of mix it up really good. You want to make sure that all of that is dissolved. Now, in this case, I want it to be kind of light, so I want to add a little bit more water. It's okay if there's air bubbles in it because I think that that's kind of cool when it dries. It leaves these like little, little neat effects and stuff. But I do kind of want to get some splatters going just so that I can see where, where some of this stuff might end up. Like down here, I want it to kind of like dissolve out. I don't like this is nice, I guess, but I do want it to kind of dissolve out. So I want a lot of splatters down here, and then. I want some areas where it's just kind of like splotted on. Um, that's that's probably too small for what I'm looking for. I want let me get this bigger brush. I think this is fine for like yeah, bigger bigger messes. It's kind of let it go wherever. I don't. I'm not you know precise with this stuff. It's all good. If it's not good, I'll make it good later. Like. Um, I, I like to use the joke, I clean it up and post, and that's not that, like, I open it up in Photoshop later or whatever. It's that, you know, in the morning, I'll take a look at it, and, like, if something doesn't look right, I'll tinker with it some more. Get some more strands, some horse coming down here. So a lot of this stuff's going to dry pretty light, which is cool. So I don't mind coming in here and just adding little swatches here and there. And then I'll kind of, like, blot it out so that it's not 
it's so brushed. And then let's kind of fill that in, I guess. And it, it's all fine because all of this stuff dries super light. And then if I'm worried about this being basically the same tone as that, I'll just darken this area up so that it kind of stands out from that. But I do want these like little areas here that kind of like, I don't want them on this side, but I do kind of, because I want the eye to kind of follow around. So I do want some of these like little artifacts in there. It's, it's hard to explain. Hopefully you guys get what I'm saying. But some of these like little visual elements kind of help with the, lack of a better term, the coolness of the picture. You know, it is a visual medium, so um, like cool style and stuff that that does matter. Let's get like a little stripe filling there. Um, some of it, sometimes it's like a little bit as less as more, but I do kind of want that whole eye direction kind of thing. And I'll tinker with this some more a little bit later on. I just want to add some of these things, if that makes sense. Let's see. When it comes to Kentucky, our understanding is that, um, sorry, let me move my mouse here. It's limited to Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yeah, that's worldwide. Um, a culinary indulgence that led to the accumulation of belly fat and unhealthy lifestyle. That is true. Yep. All of that is true. You're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, it, 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 it cracks me up that uh, other countries basically want to borrow all of the bad habits of the United States. I don't know why you guys do that. But, um, you know, you hear news stories, uh, particularly in, in Asia, where they really love Kentucky Fried Chicken for some reason. And they're basically consuming it to the degree that they really shouldn't. It's not healthy. Um, I don't eat a lot of fried chicken myself. I do eat fried chicken occasionally, but that, that's not my thing. I try to be a little bit healthier. Uh, fun fact, my first job uh, when I was like 16 was actually working at a Kentucky Fried Chicken. And I wasn't even living in Kentucky at the time. So I know how the the uh, fried chicken's made. It's not healthy, guys. That said, hey, KFC, if you want some sponsorship, reach out to me. I'll stop talking shit about your chicken. But it, it does taste amazing. It does taste amazing. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, Kentucky's okay. Yeah, uh, Mommy Q, um, Kentucky does have some really nice people in it. Um, it's kind of hard to put a pin in what, like, Kentucky is. Um, let me read some of these other comments. I hammered some beans into my page. Oh, cool. Um, I prefer elephant butt coffee. So, <laughs> elephant butt coffee. So, there is a the kind of coffee that is from, um, like basically goat poop i forget the name of it but there is a um yeah i don't remember i, I want to say it starts with a k or something but it's actually made from like um well you know digested coffee beans through digestion of a goat um let's see need to add coffee cup uh ring to meld into it yeah there'll, there'll definitely be effects like that um the coffee cup ring um so okay mama q there is a there Oh, Chicken Littles. Oh, those are the best. Back in the day, yeah. Those were the best. They don't have those anymore, but yeah. Um, White Castles kind of has something like Chicken Littles, but they're not the same. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, back to my thing about uh, Kentucky. It's hard to say what Kentucky is because there really is different geographical areas that make up Kentucky, and they're all vastly different. So in my mind, there's um, there's Eastern Kentucky, which is the Appalachian region, and that's where you've got a lot of, um, you know, like coal mines, uh, things like that, which, as you know, you know, coal, coal is kind of on its way out. Um, so there's like a lot of drug addi addiction out there. It's, it's almost like a third world country. Um, that's where we need the most help, probably. Uh, but so that's that's the Appalachian region. Then you have, as you start moving down into like Southern Kentucky, that's practically Tennessee, right? So to me, that's like Southern culture, um, practically. And um, then you have uh, Central Kentucky, which is kind of a mix. You know, it's a bit Southern culture, it's a bit its own. Um, and then you have places like Louisville and uh, Cincinnati, which is practically the Midwest. So everybody? So it really depends on which part of Kentucky you're looking at to, to really describe Kentucky because it's all different. And um, 
you know, different regions or different, like I, I would not want to be spending, I would not want to be camping out too long out in Eastern Kentucky. Uh, that, that's a scary proposition to me, but you know, Louisville, it's probably fine. I wouldn't go camping in Louisville, but there's some darkness going on this. Guys, you're going to have to relax. We're only like an hour and a half into it. Your internal clock is messed up. Your internal clock is messed up, guys. Not time. We got to fix up that. Um, this nostril probably needs a little bit darker area. But yeah, so it there's a lot of different parts of Kentucky. They all have fried chicken though. Like that, that's the thing. Um, recently I went to um, the place where, not where KFC got started, but after Colonel Sanders sold to KFC, like he started KFC, Colonel Sanders, but at some point he sold to like the fast food joint and it became a big thing. Um, so his wife also uh, cooked chicken and she wanted to return to the old ways of doing things. So she started a restaurant and I recently went to that and that, that chicken's just as amazing. Um, they, they argue the point that that's the original, original secret recipe. I don't know, but it is amazing chicken. So I have had that recently, even though I don't make a habit out of eating fried chicken, I'm not above it. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I imagine a lot of different states are that way, uh, Mama Q. Got an acre with the house, uh, still three weeks away. Yeah, that's right, Bill. I forgot about that. Yeah, you're uh, you're moving to uh, Kentucky or have moved to Kentucky. Uh, I don't know if you mentioned what area or not. If, if so, it slipped my mind. But yeah, you're you're gonna kind of see what I mean about the different uh, types of Kentucky, depending on where you go. But yeah, it's kind of weird. So like. Um, you know, we're kind of in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains, so we have that kind of culture going. We're right on the border of the southern states, so we kind of have that going for us. And then also, you know, if you just head an hour or two uh, west, you end up in the Midwest, so we have that going. You're, you're in Indiana. Let me uh, say hi to my dog real quick. Hey, you better relax, okay? There's nothing out there that you're interested in, okay? You have food and water over there. Now leave me alone. I think they do this just to get on air. Like the more they, uh, the more they they interrupt my show, they uh, they're proud of themselves. I know they are. Super interesting. Yeah. Um. I got an anchor. Yeah. I already read that. Um. The horse is giving me fancy lady vibes. Uh. Is it supposed to be female? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to go with that. <laughs> I have no idea. Honestly, I, I, you know, I'm around horses all the time, but I am terrible at identifying them. Uh, certainly the gender of them. But uh, yeah, I'm terrible with identifying breeds. So if you think it feels uh, like a lady horse to you, I'm just going to go with that. We're going to call it a lady horse until somebody proves me different. This is coming from the guy who drew, who drew a gorilla and was so happy with his monkey that he drew that he didn't know it was a gorilla until somebody corrected him after he after he spent like two hours calling it a monkey somebody came in and uh, corrected him or i think the entire chat corrected me and i was just wasn't paying attention um that was in fact a gorilla that i drew so i'm just i'm just bad at this stuff i'm bad at um identifying various animals and and so on but if it looks like a lady horse to you, in fact, you own horses, so you would know better than I. If it looks like a lady horse to you, then it's a lady horse. I own no horses. I have to go and borrow people's horses whenever I want to hang out with them. But, yeah, it looks like a lady horse to me. Why not? I wouldn't know the difference, though. America is an expansive country with a diverse range of climates, offering a wide variety of culinary options. In contrast, British cuisine is often associated with fish and chips. Hey, I just got through saying, hater, that's what I'm looking forward to in February, uh, fish and chips, basically. 
because like that church has amazing fried fish and then they always serve it with the uh fries we call them fries but you guys call them chips that is basically the highlight of my entire february is going there getting fish and chips and then going over to the pub and just hanging out listening to music and stuff like that so in my mind there's nothing whatsoever wrong with that and in, in fact if i ever did go to england um or the uk in general uh, that would be the highlight of my my uh, trip but yeah i, I watched some of your guys' cooking shows uh, i i i feel like you guys have a lot more going for you than fish and chips i can't think of anything off the top of my head but there's some things uh I was surprised to find that um, India food is really big in like London. I don't know if that's like something you're into, but I picked that up as a habit myself. Uh, like I mentioned, I'm really big into cur curry and, you know, it's, it's, it's fine not to have like anything that you call your own, you know, you can borrow some things from others. It's fine. But yeah, they're, they're definitely in the United States, there is a diversity of uh, culinary type things. My brother is a chef, so he knows more about it than I do. But um, between like Southern soul food and New England clam, clam chowder, there's a there's a wide variety of uh, things here in the United States. Yes, I sent that uh, gorilla to you. Yeah, I. I kept calling it a monkey. <laughs> I don't know why. I should know the difference. I'm not a dumb person. I went to school. Like, I should know the difference between a gorilla and a monkey. I am a dumb person, even though I went to school. <laughs> I don't know. I, I do like animals, though. Like, I should know more about animals than I do. I know more about the cute little cuddly animals that we keep as pets. I, I've never had a pet gorilla, so I wouldn't know too much about them. Your son was an army chef? That's cool. Um, food was great in Greece. I love Grecian food. Yeah. Um, I would eat gyros. Uh, any day of the week. I, I'd rather have a like a, a, a euro instead of a uh, hamburger, to be honest with you. I just love the taste of those. And then there's some other dishes. I can't recall the names of them that I like as far as Greek food goes. Um, I like Italian, but not as much as other people like Italian. Like some people live by Italian food. You guys are making me hungry. <laughs> Do they have a Taco Bell over there in the UK? Because like... I feel like taco is a big American thing, even though that's not really from here. I feel like there'd be a Taco Bell over there. If they have a KFC, they have a um, they have a Taco Bell because they're they're owned by the same company, I think, PepsiCo. Drove across Europe, and the best meal you had was Italian food in Austria. Nice. What would Austrian food be like? Like native Austrian food. I'm learning a lot about like other countries, um, food, um, type things, uh, just because like, I do have some nieces and nephews that live in Sweden. So just from talking to them, I learn little things about like what they do over in Sweden and stuff. It, it's kind of interesting. Like they're not actually into Swedish food at all. And I don't know if it's because they got their start here in the United States and then they moved over there. So they're like expats. But um, it's just it's just interesting to me. I do know this. All right, I, I know this for a fact because I went to an Asian food market um, that's run by Asians. I feel like it's authentic. When you walk in, everything looks like it. Um, you know, like it's authentic Asian food. If I ever went to Asia. I would need some sort of guide or something to help me out on what kind of food to eat because walking through that Asian food market, I recognize nothing, like literally nothing. I have no idea what any of that stuff is. So it's not just whether or not I'd like it or not. And somebody would have to explain to me what I'm eating just in terms of like what it is. I don't know. So I would need a guide 
if I ever uh, traveled in Asia just to pick out the pick out my food for me. And honestly, I think that's the way to go. Like if you travel to another country, find somebody who lives there to kind of like be your guide and tell you what, you know, all the things that you're not supposed to miss and everything. But I would definitely need that in Asia just because I would be completely lost. Like if I went to a restaurant in Asia and tried to order something off the menu, I would have no idea what I'm ordering. I would just have to point to something that kind of looks familiar to me and um, just hope for the best, really. Austrian food is much like German. I love German food. I really do. Um, um, I went to uh, high school in uh, Cincinnati, and Cincinnati has a big German culture there. Um, and they have, like, you know, restaurants that date back to, like, the 1800s there that serve German food. I love German food. That's some good, solid food. Like, that is the stuff that sticks to your ribs. Whether it's Asian delicacies or American favorites, the London City offers uh, an extensive range. Hold on, I'm going to read this like it's a travel brochure because that's what it sounds like. Whether it's the Asian delicacies or American favorites, the London City offers an extensive range of food options, ranging from delectable tacos to flavorful chickens, uh, tikka marsala. There you go. <laughs> it sounds like a tourism bridge. <laughs> yeah, like honestly... Um, so I watched a lot of shows with Gordon Ramsay in it. And, um, you know, like that, that's basically my, the extent of my knowledge of London food, but, uh, yeah, you guys, you guys have a good range over there. Uh, London's a world city. So of course you're going to have, um, you know, that kind of variety. Uh, there's some places in the world that are basically like world cities where the culture is the entire world. Um, uh, I count like San Francisco like that. I, I went to San Francisco one time and the, the impression I got was like, yeah, this is basically the entire world right here. Because like you'd be walking down the street and you'd hear like a bunch of different accents and, um, you know, depending where you went in San Francisco, you know, you might be in Chinatown one minute and then you're like, you know, in a touristy section the next minute. Well, I guess Chinatown would be touristy, but it's just basically a lot of uh, cultural variety. Yes, you do have Taco Bell. Great. So, do you have Taco Tuesdays? Because then, then you should be going to Taco Bell today. I want to represent the United. So, to, to you guys that aren't in the U.S., I want to represent the United States in the best way. Like, we don't all just sit around eating uh, fried chicken and tacos. <laughs> That's not true. We do, but we don't eat. We don't all eat them all at once. I guess. <laughs> Yeah, the United, you know, the United States got had some issues. We have our flaws and stuff, but I'm actually proud to be an American. I like I like the United States. Uh, the United States is great because if you don't like something about it, you know, you can just travel a couple of hours in any direction, and you have a totally different experience. Um, a lot like to your point, you were you were mentioning earlier, like uh, you know. The UK is relatively smaller. Uh, I don't know what sort of variety you got there, but just because the United States is so large, um, you know, if you if you don't like one part of it, you just move to another. Although, you know, I, I feel like that was more true back in the day. I feel like I feel like some of the differences in different cultures in the United States are kind of like blurring together, like. I don't know, just because of like corporate America, I guess. Um, if you if you travel to a completely different state in a completely different region, it's probably gonna look like the Walmart parking lot that I have over here. Like all the WalMarts are gonna look alike. Yeah, Jeremy made art Tuesdays. I like it. Yeah, no taco Tuesdays. Jeremy made art Tuesdays. That's a new term. I like it. Thanks, uh, hater. Appreciate that. Don't eat tacos all the time, just on Tuesdays. <laughs> we don't always fry our chicken, just on days and never mind. Yeah. We don't always fry chicken, but the best days are when we fry chicken. I don't know. I, I grew up on fried chicken. Um, I live in Kentucky now, but uh, most of my extended family is from South Carolina. So 
Uh, I remember, and I don't know how far back it is. I don't think people do this now, but I remember, again, I should point out, I am not a big church goer. So like, uh, uh, it, you know, I, I wouldn't know what things, what people do at churches now, but I remember when I was a kid, um, that was the thing. Every Sunday we would have like a big, um, potluck dinner after church and, uh, and it, you know, because I lived in South Carolina at the time, uh, everybody would just bring out, you know, fried chicken and all the side items and fixings. And I guess it's soul food now, but back then it was just Sundays, you know? So that was a big thing that I, I actually kind of miss it, you know, like I, um, I have a pretty large family and, uh, like a lot of cousins and I don't even know all their names now, but, um, I, a lot of cousins, a lot of aunts, uncles and stuff. And, you know, it was nice to get together on Sundays and, and do that. And it, it's so far back. I don't even remember when that was, you know, I don't think people do that now. I mean, a lot of my extended family do go to church and, and things like that. So they do have that sort of sense of community, but their Sundays probably look a lot different. They probably come home and watch football or something like that, which is a little disappointing because I did, um, I do remember those things fondly, like getting together with my cousins and there was like a rope swing in the tree and, you know, um, just little things like that, you know, pretty sure that's a, that's an America that's no longer around though. I don't, I don't think people do that anymore. San Francisco, bleh, to you. <laughs> I did like the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, uh, Bill Ewan's uh, Santa Fe, House Fort Knox. Oh, Fort Knox. I, I was born in uh, Fort Knox. That's actually uh, where I, like, I didn't live my entire life in Kentucky, but as it just worked out, um, my dad was in the military, and that's where I was born, and that's where I live now, so. But Fort Knox is cool. Um, they have a, um, so Fort Knox is also the, um, the, I don't know what the name of it, Mechanized Calvary, uh, wh whatever the division is that has tanks and stuff like that. And they have a big museum there. Um, so like if you're into that kind of stuff, they have um, uh, Patton, if you know General Patton, uh, his pistols he was really known for. Uh, they have his pistols there. It's um, it's pretty cool. It, it, like if you ever get a chance to go to like Fort Knox, uh, make sure you check out the military museum there. This looks is looking cool. I don't know like when I'm gonna call it done. There's a lot more that I feel like I have to do, but I'm liking how it's going. Cool. Um so I should note that it's been a while since I've been to San Francisco. I think it's changed a lot. So like the when I was there, I wanna say it was twenty twelve. Uh so like more than ten years ago. And um I think it's gone through some really profound changes over the last 10 years, you know, like with tech being there, uh, all the, uh, all the major tech companies having a space there really skyrocketing the cost of living. Um, in fact, that's one of the things that I was worried about because I saw a, a documentary. So like, you know, my personality is when I went to San Francisco, I wanted to explore everything, but one of the, um, the big thing that I'm into is, uh, like beat poetry, the whole beat generation thing from back in the 1940s, that was a big thing for me um, to visit out there because that's kind of where they all hung out. Uh, in fact, one of the best bars I went to when I was there is called the Vesuvio. Vesuvio? I don't know. But that's where Jack Kerouac used to hang out. That was a highlight for me. And, um, you know, City Lights Bookstore, That that's all really cool. And then, you know, the hippie movement, I always thought that was cool. Like, if, if I was a different generation, I would totally be a hippie. Um, but I wanted to go visit Haight-Ashbury, all of those things. And all of those things are still there back then. But I'm kind of worried about um, that kind of stuff being there forever because the cost of living has increased so much. And, you know, a lot of that stuff is based on poor people, like uh, poor people lifestyle, poor people lifestyle. <laughs> but I don't know if that's a real term. Um but I, I I am concerned about San Francisco losing its identity because of uh, cost of living increases. Like because you 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 cannot live in San Francisco anymore. 
um, it, it, without making like a, a million dollars a year or whatever it is. I don't know. But, you know, the the poet on the street, you know, citing just something that he wrote or something, he, the unemployed guy out there just living off the streets and stuff that I don't think that exists in, in San Francisco anymore. Or if they do, they're literally homeless, which is no good. So I, I think uh, San Francisco is probably going to be um, be a, a totally different place than what I, I, I think when I went there in 2012, I, I might have seen I might have seen it at the right time before it, it became something else. Now it's just a big old tech hub or whatever. And it's kind of interesting. I actually went there for a tech conference. That's why I was in San Francisco. And to me, it was it was fun because like um, I had like a city pass, which let me use the uh, the metro buses or whatever they're called there. And um, it, it's funny because I, I like to listen in on people like uh, when I'm in public and like hear some of the conversations and stuff like that, just because I don't know, <laughs> because why not? Right. Um, so I'm listening to people's conversations and every single conversation back in 2012, riding those buses in San Francisco was like, yeah, man, I'm working on this app or like, yeah, data database this or, you know, programming this or something like that. It, it's really, it's really fascinating. Like literally everybody there works in information technology and uh, I don't know. It was interesting to me. Uh, it was a lot of fun to go to that conference because I I went to the conference and I was there to learn and I spent time learning and stuff like that. But as soon as the conference was over, I was I was out on the street, you know, because I wanted to like go everywhere. I actually walked across the Golden Gate Bridge. That was fun. Um, and um, yeah, just had a good time. It's a beautiful place. Sorry, I should pay attention to the chat. What's going on? I left California a long time ago. Yeah. Um, remember riding a car through San Francisco in the early 60s? So I would argue probably, Bill, it is not the same San Francisco that you were in back then. And that's that's kind of what I'm saying. I think that San Francisco is gone. Uh, Bavetta, who sometimes goes through here, he, he's from San Francisco. He'd probably back me up on that. That said, it's still beautiful. It's it's still a great. Like if you're just going there for touristy stuff, I'm I'm sure it's just as wonderful as it's always been. Um, you went through the military museum at Fort Hood. Yeah, so the military museum in Louisville is really nice, and the other one I can recommend is um you know I live close enough to Dayton, Ohio that I make a trip out there every now and then, and um. Wright Patterson Air Force Base has a really nice air museum. And in fact, I think it's the air museum for the United States, uh, outside of maybe the Smithsonian or whatever that is out there in Washington. No, I guess that wouldn't be Smithsonian. But anyway, it's a huge uh, air museum, and it's definitely worth the visit if you guys get a chance to go to Wright Patterson. Um, those are the two military museums that I've been to, and I think they're both great. I wasn't in the military, but my dad was, and, you know, I kind of, I was an army brat, so a lot of that kind of passed on to me. Just, like, an appreciation for that kind of stuff. I think this is looking pretty good. Like, you know, let me try to move it down a little bit so that you can kind of see it without some of the glint up here. Okay. It is what it is. <laughs> Jeremy, do you think that there's still gold in the Fort Knox? Eh, I know they say there is. Um, to my knowledge, and I, I don't know if I saw the same documentary on it as you did, but I, I don't remember the name of the documentary, but my, my understanding is that they only showed the gold one time because, like, there was a question, and, and they did, like, a big press thing about it. They got all the press together to show off the gold at Fort Knox, but I think it was only that one time. And that kind of makes it a little suspect. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Um, you know, I, I know what's said. They say that there's all that gold there. And they say that, um, I think this is true, that they have like the largest security force um, at Fort Knox. So 
I think they treat it as if the gold is there, whether it, there is or not. But my understanding is they've never actually showed that gold outside of that one time for that, uh, you know, photo op, which definitely makes it, it makes it a little suspect. They probably melted all that stuff down by now. I don't know. I have no idea, to be honest, but that's a great question. <laughs> I'm not the right guy to ask, but that's a great question. I don't know who you would ask. Like, write your congressman and be like, uh, do we still have gold or not? <laughs> you know, as much as they like throw out conspiracy theories and politics nowadays, uh, I'm surprised nobody hasn't brought that up and launched a big congressional investigation and, you know, led to a, uh, another photo opportunity where they're showing off that gold. It would be kind of cool. Let's see, um, I would like to make a request, Jeremy. I lost my sister a few years ago. She was an artist herself, and I have a picture of her. Um, I would greatly appreciate it if you can create a drawing of her for me. Of course, I'm more than willing to pay you for your time as well. Hey, I, I'm happy to. Um, my email address is on, I, I think they got rid of the about page, so I think it's in my description, but somewhere on my, pro, my, uh, my channel page, my email address is there. Just shoot me an email. I, uh, I love requests like that. I, those are the type of uh, things that I like to do as uh, commemorative uh, portraits. And sorry for your loss. I, uh, you know, that it that is a rough thing to have to go through. But yeah, I I appreciate you thinking of me. So yeah, just reach out by email. We'll we'll figure it out. But um, yeah, that's the type of art I like to do. Um, whether it's pet uh, portraits or, you know, portraits. Um, to put a, a fine point on it, um, I actually got an email a couple of months back. I shared it on the community page where somebody reached out to me and shared with me, like asked me, like, hey, are you the same guy who drew this portrait for my dad uh, back in the 90s? And I'm like, it looks like something I created. And that was amazing to me for somebody to reach out to me after like, I don't know, a long time. I was, I was I, like a a kid back then and um he kept on it kept that portrait he said they hung in his like grandma's house and you know things like that and i love those kind of stories so yeah absolutely i would love to i would love to do a portrait but yeah just uh send me an email um and, and thank you for thinking of me i appreciate that uh bill says uh my dad threw a cigarette out the window on the golden gate bridge it came back in the window and lit the mattress in the back of the station wagon on fire we stopped at the bridge and pulled it <laughs> jeez <laughs> in a station wagon no less so like i would they, when the, the first part of that i was thinking like uh like a van or something like that but a station wagon you had a mattress in the back yeah that sounds like the 60s to me and I don't say that like in a uh, like a mocking kind of way. That that sounds awesome to me. Like where you're driving around the country with the mattress in the back of the station wagon, throwing cigarettes out at the uh, Golden Gate Bridge. That's the kind of hippie lifestyle that I would love to have. Oh, you can hear the cat in the back. Yeah, these these animals, man. They they just don't want to wait for me to create a pretty picture. I think I am getting kind of close to uh, to where it's not done yet, there's some finishing touches, you know the drill, where I come back and I, I look at it and kind of evaluate it and and see what uh, other uh, things, but they do have this kind of internal clock where they kind of keep me to this uh, two hour thing, so I probably will kind of wrap this up soon. Kind of smooth that out a little bit. I, w I want a little bit of lightness over here, but not too much. I kind of wanted to be like a little cloudy or something like that. I was basically looking at how this is just kind of cut off and I want to get a little bit going over, over on this side. I think that'll look cool. But I think the overall elements are in this horse, so I should probably wrap this up soon. But let's see what else did I miss. Um, there's probably a bogus uh, photo too, like the moon landing. Oh, the, the uh, Fort Knox one? Yeah, probably. I mean, Fort Knox is like right down the road. If you guys are interested, I'll go out there and take some pictures for you. Um, not of the gold. I, I, I really don't think that you can see the gold. I don't think it's been a number of years since I've been out there. I'm trying to remember, like, I don't I don't think there's any kind of tours of that thing. The, the only thing I remember is that you have the uh, military museum there. But if you guys want me to do some recon for you and just kind of go and scope it out, I'm happy to because like, 
That's not, those are the type of missions that sound like a lot of fun. Hey, Jeremy, can you go and scope out the uh, Fort Knox? You know, I don't want to end up on some list. I, should, I forgot this is a public stream. I should probably, like, not talk about going and doing recon at Fort Knox. I'm, like, that probably shows up in, like, some NAA, NSA search or something like that. But, yeah, it probably was a bogus phone. Um, I don't know if there's any money at, uh, at, um, at Fort Knox but or, like, gold at Fort Knox, but... I'd be very skeptical of that, to be honest. Like, I don't believe there is. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. I don't believe there is. I know what they say, but I don't believe it. Cat doesn't believe it either. No. At least there's no fart art. Mm -hmm. If an artist can make a picture out of farts, they probably would, to be honest with you. Told you guys about that blood painting that I saw the other day. That's just gross. Like, that's a bridge too far, man. If you're going to create art, create art. But, like, I don't even know the point. Like, why did they paint something in blood? Like, is that to make it look, like, edgy? Or, or like, just to, so they can say that a piece of them is in the painting or something? I don't, I don't get it, honestly. I just thought it was gross. It's, I mean, I'm still talking about it. So, I guess from that standpoint, the artist was successful. But, to me, it was just like, Why? And I think coffee is about as weird as I get. DOD guards, uh, Fort Knox. Yeah, they say that they have their own, like, small army uh, in protection of uh, Fort Knox. It, it's kind of interesting. There are some documentaries out there if you guys are more interested. I, I don't know enough about it. Like, you should never listen to me and consider me an expert on anything. <laughs> Definitely, uh, uh, you know, do your own research. Do you really reckon the uh, moon landing was fake? I, like, yeah, that's a great question, um, uh, Sapien Nomad. Do you, do you? Because, like, I don't know. I think it's real. I think somebody would have, like, come out. Like, it's been since 1969. Was that, like, 40, almost 50 years? Yeah, I think somebody would come out and said it yeah, otherwise. I'm gonna I'm gonna call that one real. Especially since we're like we should be talking about like um Mars landings <laughs> being fake. It's twenty twenty four. Jesus twenty twenty four. Uh all right. So I think uh I think this is the done enough where I should probably uh call it there are some more things that I want to touch up, so make sure you guys check the uh, community tab tomorrow where I'll post the finished picture. But um, it's kind of frustrating because like I, I, I would like to finish all these pictures in one sitting, but I just know that's not practically possible. But I do like to get it to the point where it makes a decent thumbnail and, and things like that. I feel like we're close to that now. But I have done enough of these um, coffee paintings where you kind of probably have an idea of where I'm going to go with it. And, you know, you know that where it looks a little flat now, it'll definitely come together in terms of like dimensions and so on. The more I tinker with it, because at this point, it's mostly like splotch, splotches and, and like darkening of uh, certain areas, getting those tonal values in there. Um, all of that is important. There's some touch-ups I might do here and there where I kind of like lift up the coffee and sort of do a little lightweight erasing. Um, but I'm not certain. I'm not certain where all those are. And a lot of that's kind of time consuming. That's why I do it off screen so that you guys don't have to put up with that. But yeah, um, hopefully, hopefully you guys like this one. Uh, the other thing is I like to go, um, just to kind of add to that. Uh, I do like to, I do want all of these pictures to kind of be consistent in terms of style. So one of the other things I do off screen is I go back and I look at my other pictures. So like I did this with the uh, chipmunk I did the other day, for example, and I go back and I look at the chipmunk and I look at the, the previous deer picture I did <clears throat> and the wolf picture and the, uh, and the other horse that I did. And I'm like, 
how does this chipmunk compare to those? Is it overworked? Is it underworked? Does it kind of have some of the same consistent elements? That That's stuff that I have to ponder. And you guys don't have to, like, sit around while I'm pondering that. That's where you, uh, you pour another glass of bourbon and you put on some music and you just kind of look at it and you're like, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I'm going to have to think about this one. But it definitely needs to be some darker areas in the face and stuff. I, I think I might I think I might widen this nostril. I don't know if that's the right proportion. But yeah, a little bit of work, but we're we're getting there. So I think this is uh this is looking cool. So cat's going nuts, dogs wanting to go out, so I, I think that's probably good for a uh, Tuesday night. Jeremy give the lady horse some longer eyelashes. Yes, there is actually I, I can paint that now because I know that um we get some dark syrupy. So here, I'll, I'll show you guys. Um, so here at the edge of this pile of, uh, I always put way too much uh, coffee on this thing, but here at the edges where the water touches the powder, it kind of forms this like syrupy bit, right? And that's, and you really have to like add, add a little bit of water to reactivate it. But here, I'll, I'll show you like right here. Yeah. There you go. See how dark that is compared to some of these other things? That's this little syrupy area, and it's really cool. So you guys can't can't see it, like on camera, but if you touched one of these pictures, these like darker areas, they come up a little bit. There's a, some texture to them. They're they're a little bit bumpy, and I I just love that aspect of it. So like like, um, you probably shouldn't touch paintings and stuff, but if you did touch paintings, it, it's a cool experience. You know, to have that sort of texture to it where you actually feel that little bump there on this eyelash. And then, of course, with that eyelash being there, I do need to, like, add some darker areas up here to kind of, like, darken in this side because it kind of becomes a silhouette. And then there'll be, like, little tendrils. Well, there's one now. Uh, there'll be these little tendrils of uh, hair coming down off of the mane and stuff because on, on this horse, the mane is, like, all over the place. But, yeah, yeah. Um, I do think this is a lady horse. I don't think it matters when it comes to horses on eyelashes, but, you know, like a male horse is, oh, I just smeared that. Whoops. So I'll fix that. Got to be careful, guys. There you go. Fix that eyelash. I'll clean that up a little bit. Um, maybe have a little bit going over here. But, yeah, I think on horses, you know, the... The male horses are going to have the same length of eyelashes. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't go out asking horses what their <laughs> beauty preferences are. <laughs> like, maybe I should. Maybe. So there are some horse experts out there. I know that I I'm going to bring that up next time. What are What are the main differences um in the face of a uh, female horse versus male horse? Maybe, you know, I like I like questions like that. Maybe uh, I'll learn something interesting. Let's see if I can kind of clean up this. Uh... So this is what I was talking about, about being able to erase. So I just, I have another little clear water over here. And I just kind of reliquify that. And then I'll, uh, I'll take and pinch off the wetness. And I'll kind of mop it up. And then, I don't know if you can really see that on camera, but it's practically an eraser. And that's kind of cool that you can do stuff like that. And, you know, it's good because I make a lot of messes. Um, so just being able to fix that up. So, yeah, lady horse. It's got the little, uh, got the little eyelashes going. So, but I, I do need to darken in some more areas and get some, uh, some depth going on in this uh, picture. Elon Musk may face significant changes in his endeavor to colonize Mars as simply doubling the starship may not be sufficient to achieve his desired goals in the near future. Yeah, honestly, like, I don't know. The guy, the guy's been able to accomplish some pipe dreams in the past. I don't know how he's going to pull off a Mars mission, but, you know, if he thinks he can pull it off, hey, more power to him. In fact, if he's busy working on Mars, he's not messing up uh, Twitter anymore, which would be great. Because, <laughs> like, it seems like every time I log on to Twitter, some Elon Musk did this, did that, and, uh, you know, leave Twitter alone, man. Um, 
That horse looks great, beautifully drawn. Thank you, Hater. Um, thank you, everybody, for your compliments. I really do appreciate it. Um, you know, I don't live off of compliments, but I do appreciate the compliments that you guys make. It, it does make it easier for me to uh, to work on these pictures and not feel totally depressed about it. So I do appreciate the compliments. Um, you guys are awesome. You guys, but you guys already know that. Like I, I tell you guys enough. I think. Uh, let's see what Tyler says. Tyler says, "Hey, I'm leaving the server. I'm done with Ben. His final straw with tonight. I'll keep in touch with you, Jeremy. I'm done with the chase. All right, more power to you, Tyler." Hopefully, uh, hopefully you change your mind soon. Um, let's see. Mama Q says the female horse probably glares better and male horse is probably better at eye rolling. <laughs> probably. Um, his robots are revolutionary. I assume you're talking about, uh, Elon Musk. Um, yeah, I guess all, all those cars would be robots. Uh, self-driving. Um, later y'all. Good work tonight, Jeremy. Thanks because I can. And thanks for reminding me that I am going to uh, hop off here. Animals need to be fed and let out and things like that. But it's a pretty good start to a horse. Um, I'll I'll continue working on it until it's like completely in the style of uh, the speech watching Mario. Now, that's a compliment. I appreciate that, Bill. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'll continue working on it until it's like, you know, finished to the, uh, the same consistent style as uh, the other pictures that I've been working on. But uh, thanks, kid. I appreciate that. Uh, let me go back to just me. Yeah, so uh, hopefully you guys had fun hanging out with me on a Tuesday night. I know I had a lot of fun. Um, uh, yeah, this is a, you know, it's the start of a pretty, like, busy week, so I needed this. Uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Uh, Bear says hi over here. <laughs> Say hi. Uh, and just to let you guys know, uh, we did last week uh, give this guy a name. His name is Geppetto, so Geppetto thanks you guys as well. Um, I'll probably be back on Friday. Um, like I mentioned, I am working on those scribble art things. They're just for, for fun. Uh, like I said, it only takes like 10 minutes. So uh, I do those like whenever I get bored. Uh, I'm going to try to do those once per day because I really do want to practice with those so that I can do that marathon I was talking about. So look for that in the future uh, where I do a marathon of um, taking requests from you guys. Uh, you send me pictures and I'll like uh, just do a scribble art picture of them while you guys are watching. And, uh, but in order to get there, I need to make them look like the person that I'm doing. So uh, bear with me if uh, that's actually like a little bit further in the future. I want to do that soon, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. But that's it for me. Hopefully you guys had fun. Um, dogs are tearing down the door, so I got to go. See you guys. Bye. Have a good one. I'll be back Friday.